I've been waiting for this moment for a very long time and finally Razer have sent me their Basilisk V3 Pro in white. This could very well be the best mouse I think Razer have ever made just as an overall package mainly because of how much I personally enjoyed using the original Basilisk Ultimate Mouse and then eventually upgraded to the Basilisk V3. And the only thing that I thought this mouse needed was a wireless option. Just everything about it was so enjoyable to use day to day, no matter what I was doing. And by the looks of things, Razer have really listened and delivered pretty much exactly what I asked for. Like this will no doubt be my new daily driver, given that it's as nice of an experience as the original Basilisk V3 was. Now, all white, just for first impressions, this thing looks sick. I'm just so glad that there's now a wireless version of this. Included in the box is a matte black quick start guide with warranty information and general information about the mouse, some Razer stickers, a wireless 2.4 gigahertz USB-A dongle that is actually labeled with the mouse name, a dongle adapter that has a USB-A end on one end to actually plug the dongle into, and then a USB type C port at the back here. And of course, an all white Razer Speedflex cable is included too, that is around 1.8 meters in length and can be plugged into either the dongle adapter or plugged into the mouse itself and be used in a wired mode if the battery ever runs out and you're still wanting to use the mouse without having it docked on the Mouse Dock Pro that is compatible with the Razer Basilisk V3 that we have here. But if you don't want to use it wired, it is of course a wireless mouse compatible with the aforementioned dongle right here that can be enabled by toggling the mouse from off to 2.4 gigahertz mode through this dongle and it even supports Bluetooth so if your PC doesn't have enough USB ports or you don't want to game on it and you don't really mind having a little bit extra latency over Bluetooth then there is always that option as well. The mouse has full Bluetooth support and can be paired to any device that supports it. And with that said let's head over to the setup, plug this mouse in and see how it performs. So I currently have a few mice plugged in, the Death Adder V3 Pro and then the Viper V2 Pro. Let's unplug both of them and my new daily driver, the Basilisk V3 Pro. Let's plug that in. I've ended up configuring some custom profiles for the mouse already. One for Adobe Premiere as well as a default one that simply has some multimedia stuff built in so I can play pause with the mouse button right here as well as decrease system volume and increase system volume by scrolling left or right which is a very neat feature. All thanks to this using the Razer Hyperscroll tilt wheel which not only can scroll left, right, it can also switch between infinite scrolling as you can see right here and tactile scrolling just depending on how you want to scroll which is incredibly handy when you're going through spreadsheets for example and you quickly want to get to the bottom of a spreadsheet. This new Basilisk V3 Pro is honestly an improvement in just about every single way over the original flagship the Basilisk Ultimate which was also a wireless mouse apart from just a couple key differences this button right here which is typically referred to as the sensitivity clutch can be removed from the mouse and this one's actually all metal which I'm a big fan of but the new Basilisk V3 Pro doesn't have a detachable button right here this one's permanently on you could maybe you know rip it off but I think that might sort of break the button so that is a difference and also the scroll wheel on the Basilisk Ultimate is slightly different as well. It is a four-way scroll wheel just like the V3 Pro however instead of it being a hyper scroll scroll wheel it doesn't have any infinite scrolling capabilities it has a customizable resistance for the scroll wheel. So I've set the resistance to the least resistant mode which results in it almost acting as like a free spinning scroll wheel but it doesn't free spin and if you crank up the resistance then it becomes more of a tactile feel but it does result in a rather enjoyable experience and you can really fine tune the scroll wheel to your own liking which is a neat feature and another enormous improvement over the Basilisk Ultimate is of course the new charging dock so this is the original one from Razer that many of you are probably very familiar with and here we have the new Mouse Dock Pro from Razer so this comes with a wireless charging puck that we have right here and we can go ahead and remove the white puck of nothingness that is currently inside of here eject that out inside of here we can actually store our usb dongle just like this so that we don't lose it and then finally you can just simply install the wireless charging puck just like this 
and then you can go ahead and dock your mouse onto the dock and it should begin charging. There we go. Great success. Overall, the new Mouse Dock Pro appears to be a genuinely improved product over the original Razer Chroma Mouse Dock, which was sort of plagued with one problem, a problem I myself went through countless times and I think I've covered in videos already. Over a few months of owning the original mouse dock from Razer, it would eventually stop working because of dust, debris, anything in the environment sort of building up in the connection points between the mouse and the charging dock. But luckily it is an easy fix, at least it has been for me. Every single time I've encountered the issue, I have resolved it without fail. You get a Q-tip, some isopropyl alcohol, and you just clean the connection points on the mouse dock and the actual mouse itself. And next thing you know, the product works as good as new. This doesn't use metal prongs to make contact between the charging dock and the mouse. Instead, it uses a traditional, a standard wireless charging method. So technically, if you want to charge this mouse or any of the mice that are compatible with the Mouse Dock Pro wirelessly, you don't actually have to buy the 80 pound Mouse Dog Pro. Instead, all you gotta do is purchase the wireless charging puck, which is sold separately for 20 pound. Still a lot of money for what it is, but it does give you universal wireless charging capabilities, similar to what you get with any wireless phone charger. This is compatible with pretty much all of them. So you don't actually need an 80 pound Mouse Dog Pro to charge your mouse wirelessly. Instead, you can put this mouse on any wireless phone charger and it will charge the mouse because it uses a traditional wireless charging method. That is incredible. And because it uses a traditional wireless charging standard, I thought, huh, will the dock charge my phone? And the answer is yes, yes it will. And all of this might leave you asking why you'd even want to purchase the Mouse Dock Pro in the first place if you can just buy the wireless charging puck and then charge the mouse wirelessly through any wireless phone charger. And the answer really comes down to one main feature and that is the integrated hyperpolling 4000 Hz transceiver. So with the original mouse charging dock, you had a dongle port where you would plug the dongle into, but this one has the dongle essentially built in and it has an upgraded transceiver. Instead of it being capped at 1000 Hz polling rate like these little dongles are, this one upgrades it to 4000 Hz, which is ridiculously fast. Kind of overkill if you think about it, you really don't need to use the mouse at 4000 Hz for everyday applications. There's just no point. It will just drain your battery life, of course. But if you're playing first person shooter games with this mouse, hey, why not, man? Why not have an extra bit of responsiveness? Probably something you wouldn't notice in reality, but it's a nice feature to have anyway. And what's also pretty good is you now get eight customizable lighting zones instead of just one on the original charging dock, which allow you to, of course, do the whole wave effect with the charging dock itself. And it has magnets built in so the mouse can, you know, nicely dock onto it and not fall down straight away, of course. It is a nice implementation. It looks great on your table. Really makes for an incredible user experience when you pair the Mouse Dock Pro and the new Basilisk V3 Pro together. And what's also quite nice is the fact that you can, at a glance, see the battery percentage of your mouse reflected by the color of the actual mouse dock itself by enabling the battery level lighting effect for the mouse dock. It actually makes the RGB lighting quite practical and not something that just looks really good on your table. Another feature that some of you might find quite handy as well is the whole hyperspeed multi-device pairing utility. So essentially this allows you to use one dongle for two devices. So in my case, I have a Razer wireless mouse right here and a Razer wireless keyboard. And what I have to do now is press add and then head over to the two USB dongles that are currently plugged in, one for my keyboard, one for my mouse. I unplug the keyboard one, and within software, it just pairs the mouse and the keyboard to a single dongle, which if you're short on USB ports, is another very good feature. One feature that would have been incredible to see added to this Mouse Dock Pro, however, is the ability to pair more than one device to this product. I really wish there was a way to pair not only my mouse to the dongle, but also my keyboard and perhaps a wireless headset as well, and just have this one device deal with all of the wireless signals. After all, it is quite high end, but that is quite unfortunate that you can only pair a single mouse to it wirelessly. Moving on to the actual software, this is gonna be very similar to my original Basilisk V3 video, but essentially you have controls for the scroll wheel. Within here, you can enable Smart Reel, which will automatically switch from a tactile scrolling to infinite scrolling, 
for you depending on how you scroll. It does work very well. It's something I have enabled for my default profile when I'm browsing the internet or doing anything really. If you're playing a game like CSGO, chances are you're not gonna want the whole free spinning thing auto enabling while you're trying to bunny hop or do something else. More often than not, I think when it comes to games, you probably want the whole smart reel and free spinning mode not being activated. So it is good that you can set up custom profiles to auto switch depending on what application you're on. So when I go on CSGO, it will auto switch to this gaming profile, which will then also bump up the polling rate of the mouse to 4000 Hertz. But my default profile and my Adobe Premiere profile actually run at 500 Hertz because I really don't need the mouse to be ridiculously responsive while I'm just browsing the internet or editing a video. It's just not needed and will drain your battery life if you just constantly run the mouse at 4000 Hertz. So what I've done is I've set the wireless power saving to one minute to really try to help preserve battery life. There is also the whole mouse mat surface calibration, which can be enabled and can be configured to your own liking if you want to do that. Personally, I've just been leaving mine on medium. If anything, it might be worth experimenting with this and seeing if you perform better with a low lift off distance or a higher lift off distance. It's something that's sort of down to personal preference. In terms of lighting, here of course we can configure tons of lighting effects. We can decrease the brightness of the mouse as well, which will of course improve battery life significantly if you don't have it running at 100% brightness all the time. And of course you can turn the lights off entirely, which will tremendously improve your battery life and the mouse will last for a very long time. Don't know how long exactly, Razer advertise around a 90 hour battery life at I'm guessing sort of like medium brightness and maybe 1000 Hertz polling rate. But yeah, the battery life can change significantly depending on the settings that you run the mouse on. Apart from that, there is of course the whole polling rate tab with the polling rate adjustment and sensitivity adjustment. You can set up all the way from one sensitivity stage all the way up to five, which each stage being a different DPI setting and different, you know, mouse sensitivity in general. And these can be adjusted by increments of 50 DPI and can also be changed based on an X, Y axis. And of course the DPI can go up to 30,000 DPI because it uses the same Focus Pro optical sensor found in the Viper V2 Pro and the Death Adder v3 pro which are really geared towards esports and that leads us back to the customize page which allows you to of course customize the 11 programmable buttons on this mouse including the button at the bottom of the mouse to do all sorts of things execute windows shortcuts by launching calculator you know launching task manager play pause volume up down launching programs switching lighting effects the possibilities are genuinely endless and you can really get very creative with the customization of the mouse like I have for Adobe Premiere. A couple of the other key features on the Basilisk V3 Pro include upgraded RGB lighting, which was honestly a surprise to me. Turns out the wireless version has two more RGB lighting zones than the wired Basilisk V3, which is quite a surprise. I just, I don't know why they've done this, but hey, for some reason, this one has 13 lighting zones in comparison to just 11 on this one. <laughs> yeah, I really don't know why they did that. It's just, you know, more RGB is better. So I think that's that's the logic behind that one. Makes perfect sense to me. And then we have the Razer Optical Mouse Switches, which are now Gen 3 in comparison to the Gen 2 ones found on here. These are rated for 90 million clicks as opposed to 70 million clicks on here. It is a nice improvement to have on such a high-end mouse ride here. And speaking of all the mouse switches, let's have a sound test. Overall, I genuinely think this could be the best mouse Razer have ever brought to market. Just as an overall package, it's incredible, not only for gaming with all of the features that it has from the 30,000 DPI Focus Pro sensor to the optical mouse switches, the 4000 Hertz wireless polling rate, 0.25 millisecond response time for the switches and the actual sensor itself. It is a phenomenal product. The gaming for professional work, thanks to the scroll wheel and just how ergonomic the mouse feels, at least for me. The RGB lights with the underglow look incredible. The new mouse stock is a tremendous improvement. The wireless charging now working with any wireless charger on the market 
Man, this thing just keeps on giving. Now with Bluetooth as well, this is hands down, I think, the best product they've brought out to market. Great job, Razer. But there is one thing that I do think needs mentioning and perhaps could be fixed through a software update. The Basilisk V3 Pro can pull off a wireless polling rate of 4,000 Hertz. Very good response time. But it can't pull that off over a wired connection. I tried to get it to work with the cable that came with the Mouse Dog Pro. I tried to get it to work with the cable that came with the Basilisk V3 Pro. And the moment you switch the connection from the Mouse Dog Pro over a wireless connection to a wired connection, your polling rate is capped from 4000 Hertz using this to 1000 Hertz over a wired connection, which doesn't make any sense. Surely, if the mouse can pull off 4000 Hertz wirelessly, it can also put it off over a wired connection? You would think so, uh, but no, no, it, it can't. Hopefully, like I said, this can be fixed via software update. I'm sure maybe they forgot to add that, but it just seems a bit strange. At the time of making this video, the Mouse Dog Pro is only compatible with two mice, the Naga V2 Pro, which I'll be reviewing soon, and the Basilisk V3 Pro that we took a look at today. And um, I wonder if the same thing is going to happen with this Naga V2 Pro mouse. Will it be able to pull off 4000 Hertz wirelessly, but be capped at 1000 Hertz on a wired connection? We will find out. Anyway though, thank you very much for watching. As always, the links to the mice and everything in the desk setup are of course linked down below in the video description for you. And with all that said, thanks for watching. I'll see you in another video soon. Goodbye.